Okay, so I'm back for the actual. This is probably going to be a very long video. Um, yeah, but it must be done. So, Old Mutual. These are the subsidiaries of Old Mutual. We're looking at, as I said in the previous video. So, let's get into it. We've got Old Mutual Wealth Limited. Okay, let, let me let me put it this way. We've got Old Mutual Life Limited. You've got Insure. You've got Life Assurance. You've got um, Investment Groups. You've got, and I'm, I think this is the quickest way for me to do it. You've got Old Mutual Kenya, which is just in Kenya. So now, um, you've got um, Alternative Investments, which is basically, if I remember correctly, like hedge fund type or private equity type. Um, you've got Life Assurance again. You've got Emerging Markets. You've got Life Holdings, South Africa. You've got Business Services. You've got Nigeria Life Assurance. You've got Wealth Trust Company, uh, you've got the investment groups, you've got Botswana, and the list goes on. You've got Nigeria, you've got Ireland, no, not only Ireland. you've got Botswana, you've got Ireland, all over uh, the continent and internationally. Now, why am I raising this as a point? Before I get to this, I'm raising this as a point because, one, it's huge. Right? It's got all of these industries, it's got all of these uh, subsidiaries in it. These subsidiaries are doing okay. Now, the reason I say they're doing okay relative is if you're looking at wealth management, wealth management doesn't need a customer to come in every single day because you're managing money, right? So this is life assurance, this is wealth, this is funeral cover, this is um, savings and investments, this is investment groups. Then you've got the ones that are within the countries that I was mentioning. They don't force you to come in every single day and 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 be in contact, right? So yes, it helps for them to gain new customers naturally. So I'm not gonna act as if they were not affected by the situation by the pandemic, which I'll get to. But the point that I'm trying to make is that they are not like a company that says the revenue we make, we are selling consumer goods. Therefore, if consumers no longer come in, we will no longer make money. What they're saying is, if consumers don't come in, we will make less money. Total difference, right? Now, why is this important? If you're looking at wealth management, as I said, you invest in people's money. So you may be forced to close down. Sure, there's going to be difficulties, but you're not going to be like a company that says, we make money purely off consumers coming in every day. And therefore, if we have lockdown, consumers don't come in, we're forced to close. Okay, so they are not they, they, they are not in that situation. Now, the next question is obviously going to be, uh, explain this. Explain this. This, 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 this. Right, now, let me quickly explain this. And I'm going to read this, but in terms of summaries, just to make uh, life a bit quick, easier for you. So, firstly, let's quickly note something that um, this is extremely important. Old Mutual said on, said on, now quickly, let me just quickly note that this is outdated, right? So, this isn't um, from today, okay? But it's still relevant. So, this is what I'm reading. So, it says, Old Mutual said on Friday, acting CEO. Ian, I assume it's Ian, Ian Williamson uh, had been made permanent. That's one point. Ending a year of uncertainty over who would lead South Africa's biggest insurers. Oh, sorry, lead one of South Africa's biggest insurers. I was just about to say Sunlam's biggest. But anyway, so that's the first thing. What does this mean? One, Old Mutual is one of South Africa's biggest insurers. Okay. So that's the first part. If it's, a, if it's one of South Africa's biggest insurers, you know that it's going to be backed. Um, nothing's backed by the government, but I'm saying you know that it's not leveraged like many other um, companies would be, or it's not it's not in such a bad situation as many other companies would be. Okay, assuming that it's not pulling on Steinhoff. So, um. Going back to the point that it's one of South Africa's biggest insurers. You've got thousands and thousands of customers. As I said, you've got savings accounts, you've got funeral plans, you've got educational plans, you've got wealth 
the management, you've got life assurance, you've got savings, you've got all the packages in between. You've got that hedge fund slash private equity, which they call the alternative investments, and all of that bundled in there, right? So you've got all of that stuff in there. Then, then, on top of that, remember, it's been a year of uncertainty, right? So, it's December 2020. Let's go back to December 2019. Right. So, it's been a year of uncertainty. So, around that time, it was around 19 rand. So, it had fallen from about, let's just say, 20 or something to about 19. Let's just say from 30 to 19. Okay. So, I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to try and, and detail this. Right. So, there's been a year of uncertainty over who would lead South, one of South Africa's biggest insurers, which basically means there was no actual direction as to who is in charge. And we'll get to that just, just now. But now there is. So for an entire year, there was no, it was, it was, it was uncertain, right? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's pretty clear. It was uncertain, right? Before we, we over exaggerate things. So Williamson held the position since 2019 of interim CEO. Now, if he's interim CEO, there's going to be limits. So that's the first thing. Unless you're permanent, there's going to be limits. You've got, there's going to be limits to your strength. There's going to be limits to the decisions that you could make. When you're sitting in there, you don't know when you're going to leave. So it's hard for you to have a vision and then to take the company in the direction you wish to take it in in order to grow it. Um, and then there's other issues. So when you're interim, it's not like you're permanent. Even if you're interim for a year, it's not like you you had full powers. You're interim, right? You're acting. So, when the CEO Peter Moyer was suspended and subsequently sacked in a dispute over conflict of interest, which is the next point. So, not only did this company have an issue of uncertainty as to who is in charge, they also had the previous CEO or the then CEO before Ian came in. Um, he was suspended and then sacked over disputes of conflict of interest. So let's quickly go from 2019 before we go backwards. From 2019 to 2020, we have a year of uncertainty. The person who's in charge does not have full powers. And it's only now around, I think, June, July or so that this person um, now got full powers. Now, obviously, someone's going to say, well, if it's June, July, um, that still puts you, uh, where does it put you? It puts you here yeah, at, at about what, 12, 13 rand a share, and it's dropped, <sighs> you know, volatility. We're not going to complain about that. Um, but then the previous person was sacked, which firstly, let me just quickly say, the fact that that person's suspended and then sacked over disputes, over conflicts of interest, shows how strong the company is right could have been hidden a lot of things could have happened but they're like no it's wrong so we, we're gonna dismiss you okay so in this guy's dismissal and i'll get to this basically in this guy's dismissal then says um he then had to contend a court battle with moyo and and the coronavirus um crisis both of which hurt the insurer's bid to remake itself so not so firstly let me just quickly state you had this guy who came in i'm not gonna state whether he did a good or bad job right he he came in 2019 he was basically sacked right so from 2019 to 2020 um there's no clear direction there's no clear leadership just before that um there's oh so during that time you also have an issue of um someone being sacked um due to a conflict of interest which then also leads, and I doubt that because of conflict of interest, you're going to be sacked, right? There's generally going to be things behind that. So there's that. Then we go backwards a bit, and you say, at the same time, so not only did this person not have full powers as CEO, he was also fighting with the previous CEO in a court battle um, because that person had been sacked, right? And on top of that, this person had to go through the coronavirus. So, 
the company hadn't been doing so well when he came in. He didn't have full powers. He had to fight the CE, the previous or the current CEO who had been sacked. And he had the virus coming. And the stock fell 50%. Yeah, it's not so bad if it's going to fall 50% if you have to fight the virus, which is like a once in a once in a lifetime situation. The guy gets sacked for for um what's it? Conflict of interest. Um and you don't have full powers. Right. So it's kind of difficult to 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 grow that company in a year. Then then, then, this is next. The steady hand, strategic mind, and authentic leadership style has been both refreshing and truly welcome. Chairman Trevor Manuel said of Williamson. For those that don't know Trevor Manuel, uh, he was... The, he was one of the finance ministers in the past. I believe he was a finance minister, I think... If I'm not mistaken, in Mandela's era, in Mandela's cabinet, if I'm not mistaken, if not before that, but I am aware that many people who understand the past, um, including people that I knew, quickly and generally argued that Trevor Manuel was the best or the best of the last of the best finance ministers um, that we had. Um, and then if you go back and you look at the stats and many other people that speak about this, they, they mention how up until that time they ran the study and all the spending and basically the budget was a lot more um, intact before it uh, became what it was today. So when Trevor Manuel left as finance minister, I'm not sure what he did for a while, um, and then he eventually went to, to Old Mutual as chairman. So this is a person who's basically saying, so quickly, you've got a person who was the finance minister of the country turning around as chairman of the, one of the biggest um, insurances in the country, turning around and saying, this guy's a steady hand, right, which means he's straight, okay, he's strategic, uh, he's real, right, he's authentic, he's got his own leadership style. And it's not a fake. It's refreshing and truly welcoming, which also then implies that the previous guy didn't have one of these things. Right. So then also implies that the previous guy who was there wasn't necessarily strategic, didn't really have a steady mind, his leadership wasn't necessarily as strong, and he didn't really bring anything new. Okay. Then the decision clears up. The last big question of the of the Following the saga with Moyo, a difficult period of under 75 years, and um, basically the reputation was ruined, and and yeah, the, the share price got hit because of the one of one of the reasons was because of the situation with um, Moyo. Then uh, it endured losses, there was litigation, so that also had its own cost because of the CEO who had been sacked at that time, who and that. And then, of course, there was also blocking, as I said, he didn't have full rights. So there was blocking um, on seeking of his replacement. So he was interim, but he was also blocking the ability for someone to come in to be actual CEO. That's why he had the interim CEO for an entire year, because he, one of the things that he was doing is he was blocking the his future replacements. Uh, these have been overturned by... These have been overturned, but Moyo still plans to pursue a case seeking permanent reinstatement of damages. So, good and bad news. Good news, they've been overturned. Bad news, this guy's still fighting. Good news, he's seeking permanent reinstatement or damages. Basically, if Old Mutual can argue that this guy was sacked because he should have been sacked, it's done, right? He's probably gonna let it go. They might settle. Um, so they'll endure a few more losses for a bit um, due to finances. Again, we're going back to damages. So the damages might either be in, um, under false accusations or um, being dis false dismissals or what's it? Ah, not being dismissed correctly or in the right process. I'm not in the mood to try to figure that out. Unfair dismissal, there it is. Um, 
that's if again he can get permanent reinstatement however in my view again i'm not sure but in my view it's kind of hard to get permanent reinstatement when they've secured the new ceo as permanent right so i think at best he's got he's got damages at best they go still going to hit the company so the company could still drop a bit but once that's done then the guy can start working on building the company let's move on williamson is now tossed will not be tossed for reviving old mitchell's performance and basically started sliding um the company's the company has seen profits lie since it's relisted in Johannesburg in 2018, which also then implies that Moyo was in there. So it turns around and basically implies that Moyo was crap. I don't know if he was, right? I wasn't following it, but I'm just reading the statement. It's basically saying this guy was not doing a good job. This guy has conflict of interest. This guy had to be sacked, and we like the new guy, and he's there and he's permanent. And when you're around, profits slip. So again, it's it's. I think that the guy's just gonna fight just to get some cash, and then you'll leave. I don't see him being reinstated. But moving on, some investors thought an external candidate would have been better. But again, um, Jacques Plout, if I if I pronounce it correctly, I hope I did. Jacques Plout, or Plout, Plout, portfolio manager at Allen Gray another reputable comp um, company old mutual's number two shareholder which again they have a massive stake in old mutual was pleased with the choice so alan gray is basically pleased with the choice the chairman of old mutual's pleased with the choice um we've got leadership that's now coming in he's welcome they pretty much like him um williamson knows the business very well and speaks sense um so that's good news there are definitely some things to fix there and part of me thinks that maybe it needs an outsider to do it, but not necessarily. I'm not sure who was saying that. I'm going to assume that it, it was Jacques Plan. Basically saying, generally, if, if there was internal conflict, you do want someone from the outside who's got no politics, nothing of that sort. But um, there's something I missed here. Anyway. Um, yeah, there's something I missed. I think there's somewhere where they spoke about the fact that he's been he's been here for like a decade or something. But long story short, that he's been at Old Mutual for a very long time. There's somewhere I'm I missed that somewhere. But basically, he's been at Old Mutual for a long time. Um, he's been doing very well. As I said, he knows the business in and out. Um, he makes sense. So everyone seems to be pretty much happy with this guy being CEO, except for the previous CEO, right? So. Let's now assume that worst case, let's just assume that Moyo cannot be reinstated as permanent because if he does, life's going to be super difficult. If he's smart, he's not going to take the reinstatement of permanent of being permanent. It's not going to make sense. So he's just going to probably sue for damages. Um, he'll take a, a, maybe a mole or a few moles. He's going to run off and he'll be happy with himself. Then Ian is going to have to basically rebuild the company to wherever now this is kind of where i'm going with it so ian is now in charge um he's got full rights as a ceo no longer interim the person who made profits slide is no longer in the company so he's not even demoted he's out of the company at that stage the chairman and everyone else is happy with this guy so they obviously go into embrace whatever it comes up with, right? So that's the one issue. So let's just take the statements and because we're not just gonna read statements and, and, and think we done. No, 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 no. Uh, that's just one statement, right? I'm not gonna read every statement because, well, um, yeah, I'm not that good. <laughs> um, and I'm tired. Anyway, so let's move on. Now. Let's look at all mutual. It's got a market cap of 55 billion. Um, it's got a negative EPS. Remember, it's got a negative EPS, but for a year it's been losing. For a year it's basically been losing since 2018. It's been on a profit slide. So again, we're going back. Remember, they said since 2018, but a big boom. 
since 2018, I know when in 2018. So we're, we're just going to assume, well, it's 2018 November, right? Or let's just say 2018 December, right? December, there we go. Let's just say from 2018 December, okay? So we're going to assume from there, profits like, take a look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Profit slide. Profit slide all the way up to around 20, I think 2019. 2019. 2019. It's been on our profit slide. Then from 2019, it was massive because we had the whole court case and was fighting, and this guy's like, he's half CEO, but he's not really CEO because he doesn't have full rights up until around June. I think they said June. Um, well, let's just. June or May or somewhere there. Right, so it's it stops about a rand. Okay. But he's 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 got his powers back. Great. Now, why do I think that this is a good time to get him? Fundamentally, as I said, Old Mutual is a good company, right? Got all of those subsidiaries under it, it's one of the biggest insurers. It didn't have a scandal. That's the other thing is we need to separate the differences between a company that had a scandal that killed it, a company that did something wrong, like fraud, or a company that is just bad. Okay. A company that had a scandal um, was a company that was just like, they did something that really just killed them. It was just like, we can't believe you did it. Um, kind of. <laughs> Basically, they, they, they did fraud, right? That's a scandal. It kills you. It kills the confidence. Then we get to um, what they, again, ran off, horrible example, but they manipulated numbers, right? So their earnings weren't actually what they were earning, but that's a different story. We'll get to it another day. Then we get to the next one. Excuse me? Get to, getting to Old Mutual. Old Mutual did not have a scandal. What Old Mutual had was. We can call it office politics. We can call it uh, internal. I know. Let's just call it beef, right? Let's just call it beef, right? We 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 all we all we all yeah. Let's just call it beef, right? Internal beef. Basically, the one CEO was like, I, "I'll do this," and they were like, "You're not allowed." He was like, "Why not?" And they're like, "Well, conflict of interest." And he's like, "Screw you!" And then they were like, "Screw you too. We want you gone." And then there was a fight. And eventually got kicked out and then he came back for a fight and if he loses then he's gonna be gone there'll be no more beef and we all living happily ever after right that's one this EPS this earning per share is based on this guy still being around so this EPS is not gonna be here forever it's based on the coronavirus it's based on the court case it's based on the fact that the guy doesn't have four rights it's based on the fact that he can't grow the company because he doesn't have all the, the abilities. It's based on um, the it's the damages are still gonna come through. It's based on the, the the litigation costs. All of these things, right? So all of these things are playing their own role. Anyway, so and even after that, they still had um, a four dividends of in March. Only one this time. Generally, they had two. Now they had one. A four dividend of fourteen percent. Yes, high dividend yields are great, but not always. But in this case, I still like it, right? 14.5%. Um, but again, the reason it's 14.5% is because it's now at around, let's just say it's about 12, 12 bucks a share. Okay. So if it was at about 24 rand a share, again, we're just going to look at ratio yeah, just to, 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 make, to make numbers easy. Um, we're going to look at the ratio. So let's assume it was 24 rand, 24 rand a share instead of 12 rand a share. If it was 24 rand a share, it was 24. Yeah, so it's almost 12. So if it was 24 rand a share. Now we're going back to a point that would then say um, this would be halved. Okay. Um, we're looking at it in terms of ratio. If this was halved, we'd be looking at somewhere around the 7.27. Roughly, so just over seven percent. Right, we'd be looking at just over seven percent. Um, if that's the case, on top of that, remember profits have been sliding, so the earnings have been dropping. So, the point I'm making is 
consider this. If the stock price continues to fall, it won't fall to zero. Why do I say it won't fall to zero? Again, the company is too big. The company has reached a point where it's a basically blue chip, like it's basically a blue chip company. Okay, um, it's stable enough. The reason that it's fallen so much is literally because you had a leadership that that had an issue and they needed to resolve it. At the same time, the person who was expected to resolve it didn't have full powers to resolve it up until now. At the same time, there was a virus, a lifetime, once in a lifetime virus. There were companies that got wiped out by this virus. And this guy's and this guy had to go through all that and it only fell fifty percent. Okay? So now imagine what's gonna happen when one He's in charge and the guy's gone. Two, he's got full powers and everyone loves the fact that he's in charge and he's actually focused on the company. Then, then on top of that, what do you think is going to happen when eventually the third wave comes? Because we went through the first wave. I keep saying this. I've said it before. The second wave is coming. I expected the second wave to come in next year, to be honest. I expected, this. I expected the second wave to come in next year. Roughly around the same amount of time, maybe even longer, even harder. Um, expected things to be much worse during the second wave, and then the third wave just kind of sneaks its way in, and then things boom. Just doesn't seem to be the case. Apparently, the second wave is in already. So again, what do you think is going to happen at this time? What do you think is going to happen when the second wave is done? Because second wave is generally the worst. You've got the second wave, then you've got the third wave. And then it's all it's done pretty much right. So I'm going back. Second wave goes, third wave goes. The second wave is over, the third wave is over. You have a CEO who's loved, who's building the company, who's focused, whose profits are rising, which means the earnings are gonna be rising. And you go back to about what? Twenty-four bucks a share. Now, if you buying at 12 right now again remember i said at 24 bucks a share um your yield would have been just over seven percent okay your yield would have been just over seven percent just over seven and a quarter percent your yield right if you had bought at 24 and the stock price drops and you just like I'm good for the dividends. I'm I'm not worried about the stock price. You'd be getting a seven, and you'd be getting about seven percent plus yield. Okay. Now, if you buy it at eleven or at twelve, okay. Let's just say you bought it at twelve. If you buy it at twelve, and the stock price goes up to twenty-four, currently the yield is at forty. It's not at seven because remember seven is the seven percent is going to be based on twenty-four dollars. If you have bought at twenty-four dollars. The yield would be at seven percent. Okay, but now you didn't buy at twenty-four dollars. You bought at twelve dollars. Okay, if you bought at twelve dollars, your yield is going to be currently what it is now. That's seven at fourteen point five five percent. Now, what do you think is going to happen if that twelve if that twelve dollars goes up to twenty-four? Your yield is going to double. Again, we're going to assume. That the earnings haven't increased we're going to assume that you're only working on a simple ratio we're going to assume that you're going to be working on a normal ratio right um that's it okay so if the earnings increase if the earnings don't increase by the way let me just quickly say if the earnings don't increase and it remains exactly the same the dividend remains exactly the same and they just like not will give the same dividends of one one nine fifty because we're still building the company um, it's going to be like that for the next three, four, five years. You're still making a 14% per year dividend, which means in what? It's, it's in 10 years? It's in less than 10 years. Uh, in about seven years, you'd make your money back. Okay? Now, if the share price increases and the earnings double, share price double, the earnings double, again, we're working with ratios, it would take you to 20, 
eight, 29%. 29% says in three years you'll make your money back. And then every year after that, it's pure profits. Okay? Now, again, I'm not promising anything. All I'm saying is you're buying a company that was worth at some point 20, almost 30, let's just say 20 bucks, 20, 24 rands at about 12 rands. You're buying it at a 50% discount. And not like what Warren Buffett does. You're buying it at a 50% uh, discount because of a virus that came that comes in once in a lifetime. It's not really a scandal, office politics and leadership. All those things can end. So yeah man, I mean that's 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 essentially my thesis. My thesis is basically that this company didn't have a long lasting scandal. It was literally COVID, which smashed everyone, right? And it'll pass eventually. It'll pass. And leadership that's being sorted out in courts so in the next let's just say in the next year or two you know um things could change and even then it doesn't it's we don't need this guy to be removed in a year or two because the other guy's been put in permanent so this guy's just gonna be annoying for a while but i mean the the quicker he leaves the better but um i'm going back to the point that so so during this year or during this current situation they've had a negative margin obviously um, things have not been looking good so if you just look at this balance sheet it looks terrible they've got a revenue of 107 billion in this year the 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 quarterly revenue drop by over 50 percent the EBITDAs at negative 389 million which is huge the net negative income of like two billion um they've got 31 billion in cash in their balance sheet 31 billion in cash they've got a debt of 17 billion so they can still pay off their debt that's not that's not too much of an issue they've got positive uh operating cash flow which is a good sign um and then the people within the company only three hold about three and a half percent and then institutions outside your pension funds and so on um yeah, your pension fund, your hedge funds, your mutual funds, and etc. etc. hold uh, more than half. They hold the control in share. So again, that's the other part is if it really is an issue, if you have that kind of situation, you can just have your 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 uh, shareholders who form your directors, you can then sack that guy, which is assume, which is what I'm assuming essentially happened. Is the director sacked that CEO, and yeah, I mean the directors are representing the shareholder, so that's what I'm saying. I don't see him being reinstated at a permanent level, unless you can share, unless you can change the the uh, directors who were voted in by the shareholders who have <laughs> the voting power to vote in the directors. If this all makes sense, so the CEO was sacked by the directors who were voted in by the shareholders who have the controlling share of the company who vote in shareholders so even if you wanted to change directors it doesn't matter if you wanted to have a directors meeting or something and say well we need we need to we need to re-vote on directors it's fine but you go back and you say well who are going to be the directors well the shareholders are going to vote the directors in because the directors represent the shareholders right if i'm not mistaken anyway so yeah, this is what I was talking about about the four dividends, so I'm not gonna speak about that again. Um I've mentioned all of that stuff. Uh as I said, the dividends have cut. That's also another another good sign is that if 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 you can no longer pay the dividends, don't don't pay the dividends. Don't do don't take earnings or um money that isn't profit and then pretend it's profit to pay dividends just so you're trying to gain that confidence. So they stopped in April, and they're just like, ah, we don't have the money to do it anymore. It's fine. And then, of course, remember this: the the revenue. Remember, as I said, the entire company was affected for about a year from 2018. Right. So from about 2018, from around there to there, they were affected. 
I don't know when that guy came in. So, as I said, um, I can't comment on that. But the point I want to make is the 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 numbers in the book are correct, sure, but they're also going to be affected by what is happening in terms of the politics of the company. And I think the politics of the company, like again the the, the CEO and all of that, affected the performance of the company. So the question then becomes, if you want to say I don't care, the question then becomes is if the CEO had stepped down, much like the CEO of Steinhoff did, if the CEO had stepped down um, and had not blocked his replacements, then would Old Mutual have performed the way that it did? Right? Would the share have fallen from about say twenty four rand to twenty rand to sorry twelve rand? Had the coronavirus not hit, would we have fallen from twenty four rand to twelve to twelve rand? And if the answer is no, then it just simply says once these two factors have been removed, we'll get back in. If the answer is yes, then we need to go back and say, well, then clearly they're not failing because of the coronavirus, and clearly they're not failing because the, of what the previous CEO did. There must be another issue. And if that is the case, then that contradicts the article that we were given by the sky. Now, again, obviously we know that the article is always going to be positive towards the company, so we're not always going to take it at face value, but I'm simply saying it's good for us to research these things and understand from the perspective of the company why they state, why they feel that the company itself hasn't been performing. So we're able to identify whether the issue is a long-lasting issue, whether it's a management issue, or whether it's a, it's a, it's a factor that's something that, that, that we cannot, sorry, something that we cannot um, fix. So... That was, that's basically my research thesis or my bullish thesis behind Old Mutual. I do believe that Old Mutual is going to rise back as soon as, as I say, as soon as um, they fix the court issue with the CEO and as soon as the coronavirus passes through. Up until then, I don't really expect Old Mutual to be rise that much. But again, to me, it's just going to be an opportunity to buy in. So if, again, if, um, if if this takes a year or two to blow over, it's fine. Look, if I'm if I'm if I only got about a hundred rands or fifty rands a month, uh, let's just say I've got um, sixty rands a month as an example. If I've got sixty rands a month, I'm buying three shares of Old Mutual for an entire year. I'm buying thirty six shares. Um, was it thirty six? Thirty six. 36 shares, 36 shares, 36 shares, um, if the shares go up to 12 rand, I think they'll be worth 72 rand, so yeah, I'll have 36, what am I doing, ah, no, they'll be, they'll be worth double that, okay, so, yeah, 60, 12, I have about 2,400 rand, um, and that plus the bonus, so, in my view, it's just an idea of you want to jump in, buy them, but you're not trading them. You're buying them and you're basically saying, you know what, I'm good sitting for five years while these shares are just at like 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, and so on. So that when when they finally start to boom, then boom, you'll, you'll sit there and you'll say, I've got 100 shares, and that's kind of the plan. It's, it gets to a point where it's like, I've got a hundred shares of old mutual. Um and I bought them at twelve rand a share. So I've got one thousand two hundred rands in old mutual, right? But now old mutual is worth twenty four rand a share. So now my one thousand two hundred is two thousand four hundred in value. Okay. But at the same time, the other idea is because with hundred shares, I've got a hundred shares. Hundred shares, right? The other point is, if I've got 100 shares, right, and each share is giving me, by that time, let's just say, uh, two rand a, a, a year, right, I've got 100 shares, two rand a year, I'm making 200 bucks a year. You know what I'm doing with the 200 bucks a year? I'm going to reinvest it in. If I take 200 bucks a year and I reinvest it in, even if Old Mutual at that time is a 20 rand a share, I'll be able to buy 10 extra shares a year. 
indefinitely. Basically, if I keep reinvesting, then I'll be able to buy 10 shares every year of the dividends of that. And that's assuming that at that point, that's assuming that it just jumps up for 20 bucks to 20 bucks a share at that time. We're assuming that um, the earnings are going to remain the same. There are a lot of things that we're assuming that, that aren't at the best. Positives, you know, on a positive note, it's possible for us to simply say, eventually get to a point where we go from 100 to 200 to 300 shares of old mutual um, and you get to a point where you're making like 500 bucks a year dividends and you're just reinvesting that and you find yourself with a, a, a share amount or share value of say 10,000 rands off of old mutual alone but that's purely of dividends so that's the power of investing guys I've been speaking for 40 minutes it's time for me to bounce thank you for listening this long cheers